The Fuji Cast is an independent loading zone production. Kev, spring has sprung. Um, we're actually recording this on Good Friday because we're both doing stuff over the next week. And I know this one goes out on the Monday. Oh, it's so hard to keep up with Kev. But um, it being Easter weekend as we record this, that means you will have gone to church 1,786 times. It'll feel like that. It has felt like that. <laughs> what is what is your job as um, as head of church, Kev? Uh, it's not a job. I'm a part of the, the Eucharistic minister team. So yeah, which means, means which I means can, what to a sort of a non- that means I can distribute um, the host and the wine. Oh, we've talked about this before. Yeah, we yeah, have talked about it yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's not real wine, is it? N- no, no, no. It's not wine like you buy in the co-op. But um, well, what is it wine. then, Kev? What, what? Well, I don't really know what it is exactly. It's more like sweet sherry i suppose it's not very alcoholic it's a tiny amount about less than less alcohol than in a non-alcoholic beer i would have thought really um, you just you literally just have a tiny well, tiny sip and do you remember dave it. allen the comedian do you remember, yeah do you remember do dave remember allen him. dave dave allen one of his um you'll have to look him up on youtube if you australian guy wasn't he uh i don't think dave allen no he's irish he was irish was he? yeah dave, hmm. dave allen let me just check Dave, Dave Allen, he he used to um, he used to play the part of priests, didn't he? Do you mm. remember? And one of his uh, always yeah. w- always one of his uh, here we go. Da- David Tinan Omaho- Omahoney, not very Australian, known professionally as Dave Allen, was an Irish comedian, satirist, and actor. He was best known for his observational comedy. Yeah, and he. Yeah. he regularly provoked indignation by highlighting political hypocrisy and showing disdain for religious authority, which he did. I think he was, was he quite religious himself? Though? I don't know. Anyway, he I'm always, not, yeah. he would always play the part of the, of the priest who would be out, out the back swigging the uh, the communion wine. So you're saying there's no point doing that. There'll be, there'll be more alcohol in a... Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it might be different in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot of that goes on at Easter anyway, so oh, it's right. much, none of that really happens. In so not handing out bits. wine, not handing out bread, not not really. So mm. just go and do your thing, and then come home. You're not re- you're not really selling the entertainment factor to me. Uh. The Fuji Cast. I was thinking I I, I could be down there. Oh. But, I go uh, twice today. Do you go twice today? Well, we're recording this on on Good Friday, so I appreciate yeah. you're working on a day where you would usually not choose to work. Um, but um, you're going twice today. I am going twice today. Right. And uh, but on both occasions, same sort of job, yeah? Yeah, then no, no job. There no, is no job. No job, okay. This is the most enlightening conversation we've ever had at the start of a programme. <laughs> Can you tell, before the show, we, we had a conversation about what should we talk about? Yeah, yeah. I'm, no, I'm, nothing's, I'm trying, nothing's happening in my I life. I usually <laughs> lean on you, Kev, because you're normally doing starry stuff, but um, <laughs> the less you work, the less starry you are. <laughs> it's, it's going to be stories about you doing nothing at church um, new socks n- new socks and mucking out the horses god this is not going to help listener ratings Kev can't we get you back into gainful employment <laughs> right welcome to the Fujicast you and your questions um, sent in to click at fujicast.co.uk or via the Facebook how are we doing on Facebook with the uh, the, uh, well, the we've had we've had one question. What? In in fact, we've had two questions in the last three weeks. However, we have got a stack that we haven't got to yet. So good, no drama yet. There's quite a few emails. Um, I don't know what. Yeah, okay. So we got questions. We don't have to do one of our. Is this worth doing anymore, Kev? Mo- <laughs> moments, which usually re- reveals a plethora of questions. But before we start, um, we should say thank you to Pick Time for sponsoring this show. They've been with us for quite a while now. And I know that many people who've, uh, who've uh, listened have, have gone on to use Pick Time. You've met them at, at uh, did you, you, meet, you met quite a few at the photography show. That's what we should yep. have talked about. How did your photography show thing go? We'll come back to that. So you met, you met a few at the photography show, didn't you? Yeah, there's a lot of people talking about using... Pick time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite a few Fujicast listeners I've bumped into, various stuff like that. So I know for a fact from Pick Time that quite a few people have subscribed. And I also know that there is um, some amazing updates coming. I um, can't really say too much more, but yeah, there's some good stuff happening on Pick Time in the future. Um, what do you know? Then? We, we yeah, I know. did. I did a wedding in 
February, uploaded it a couple of days ago, kind of did my usual thing where I have a section for color, a section for black and white. Yeah. And it's the first time I use the AI face recognition. Oh. Thingy. And how do, no, for those saying what the AI, what, 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 what does that bring to the party? So you can switch on, and when you upload your images, when yeah. you put your gallery live, you yeah. can switch on the AI face recognition. Mm. And what that means is it will create a little thumbnail of all the people it recognises in the picture at the top of the gallery. Right. So uh, Auntie Maud can just click on her own head yeah. and see all the pictures <laughs> that she features in, uh -huh. uh, if she so wishes. Or it's also clever enough to figure out what bridal prep is or uh -huh. ceremony pictures, uh -huh. all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's quite incredible. AI is an, an this insane juggernaut yeah. that is basically, I mean, I might not be me. I might be an auto-generated, my voice. Well, we, um, we, you won't have heard this, but I did on the, the Photo Walk podcast, on the Extra Mile, um, so the, the Patreon one, I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did, uh, I call it a sketch so it went down well in most circles. It wasn't universally appreciated because um, I think because it was so good that the the setup that I did for it was uh, I, I think was I think disturbed. Um, is that the right phrase? I don't want to get in trouble, Kev. I'm always in trouble. Uh, one, one particular listener who was whoa whoa. I essentially I said I had to sort of but like an illusionist I had to set up. Um, this sort of scenario that I was in a cafe. So I went and got cafe sound effects. That's an easy bit to do. And the next bit I set up was that I had two friends with me, uh, one female, one male friend, um, both from the voiceover industry. And we were sat down having a coffee chat. And it was about the, uh, the, the AI industry and it was about the sound AI industry. The, the, at the end of it, I came clean and said, you know what you've just been listening to? You haven't been listening to three people having a chat about voice AI. You've been listening to me playing the part of three people. Me obviously playing me, but the other two people were also me. As I did my intonation, the AI followed my intonation. And it made mm. me into uh, it made me into the two characters. I think one was Chloe, one was Chloe, one was Simon. Uh, and uh, for, for many people, it was a very, very convincing chat. I think Chloe was slightly more electronic than Simon was, but it was blooming good, Kev. That's the juggernaut yeah. of AI in the voice world. So, it is, it is yeah. insane. Absolutely. I remember last year, you know, when I was still doing my radio shows, I, I did an entire show with the voice, um, like the talky bits, AI generated. But it wasn't, didn't, I didn't do it, so it sounded like me. I just oh, did right. it okay. with this kind of really lush female voice. And I just typed in all the stuff that I would have, yeah. I would have said, and it was really funny because uh, it was just far more elegant. There was no ums, <laughs> there was no ahs, there was no coughing, uh, you know. But I, I had to type it all in. But it was yeah. it was an interesting experiment. Yeah, but but, I, th uh, I think I think people do like the human side of of voice yeah. and yeah, yeah. being able to digress, etc. But you're right; it's amazing what it can do. And I would imagine a year ago it wasn't great at intonation. Now no. it's it's just amazing do you know how long you have to speak into uh into, into i was going to say a tape machine tape machine granddad uh, you only have to to offer up one minute of yourself to be absolutely cloned yeah one minute in voice terms that's nothing at all yeah um so anyway we were talking about ai but but <laughs> sorry pick time the juggernaut that's coming down the road is already here and it's being used on pick time for for good measure yeah, in that case, it is a very good, you know, because that's a productivity yeah. enhancement yeah. Um, rather than a, a kind of job replacement type thing. So, yeah, you just kind of switched it. I'll switch it. The first time I'd done it, first time I'd had a wedding since they launched this. Um, I don't know whether the clients have used it. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard from them. So, uh, but it looks nice, just like everything with pick time. It just looks beautiful. You know, the design, the flow, the heuristics of the page, just excellent. So, yeah, new feature gets a... Tick. Ding. Go to pick-time.com. And then if you want to join, uh, type in Fujicast and uh, you'll get one month absolutely free. Right. Uh, who wants to go with the first question, Kev? I'll go. I'll go. Go on then. Um, Tracy, I'm starting from the top. 
the ones we haven't got to yet. So this is actually from 12 weeks ago. <laughs> Tracy Marie Smith. I probably need to upgrade the X-T4 at some point. I have the X-H2S, which I do love. And being a dog stroke equine photographer, I'm just wondering if the X-T5 would be better. I love the ergonomics of the X-T range. Mm. Well, if you're an X-T user, the 4 to 5, I mean, the difference is the 40 megapixel sensor, isn't it, for a start? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's a big upgrade. Correct. That's about it, though, really, because the X-T4 and the X-T5 use the same sensor. Yeah. Now, if you're upgrading from the the, the upgrading from the X-T3 to the X-T5 is a huge leap. Upgrading from the X-T3 to the X-T4 is also a big leap. Upgrading from the X-T4 to the X-T5 is not a enormous leap in terms of performance. There is a little bit better because it's got a new kind of processing engine jiggery pokery going on. Mm. But the obviously the big feature there is the IBIS and the bigger megapixels. So if that is what you think you need, Tracy, if that's what you're you're um, losing out on, yeah. then uh, yes, it would be an upgrade. However, because you have the XH2S, which is a speed demon in its own right, yes. then maybe you don't. Unless you want the megapixels, in which case Unless you, need the you, megapixels, you want the... Yeah. Um, you don't want the H2S, do you want the H2? Um, yes, exactly. But, uh, you know, I think dog, equine, and photographer, you need speed. Yes. Speed, 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 speed. It is all about speed. Um, and presumably that's why you've gone for the XH2S rather than the XH2. Um, you know, if it were me, I'd flog the XH2S, get rid of it, get rid of the X-T4, get two X-T5s. Would you? Okay. That's just me. Yeah, but you are an XT man, aren't you? You do like your I, Well, I'm an ex-pro man, but that, that seems to have been forgotten. So I um, I just don't like the XA range. Yeah, I don't think the ex-pro has been forgotten, is it? Uh, I thought the roadmap would, uh, would um, that, that would find its way onto the highway at some stage. Maybe. I mean, the, the, the last time the managers were interviewed and it was shared on um, Fuji Rumours, I can't remember where they were interviewed, France or something. Yeah. They said, no, we haven't forgotten it. But we, you might have to wait. Yeah. Um, this one is just. Uh, I've I've got two. There's a very very short one here, Kevin. I'm sort of wincing as I read it. I'm sort of looking out one corner of my eye, expecting you to swipe me digitally across the ether. Joachim Herrmans. Um, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. From Antwerp in Belgium. I would like to hear Kevin say the names of the upcoming X100 lines. Let's just get this one out of the way, Kev especially the X100 V111 and the X100 1X. What are they going to be? Just like you just called them. <laughs> no. By that stage, Kev, even you are going to say, that's just a little bit finicky to say. <laughs> uh... Shall we wait until it happens? Maybe they'll change the name to something completely different. Perhaps, perhaps, as was suggested at the House of Photography, there could be an X. 200 at some stage because at, at what point do you say the the question was asked at one point uh do you do you say look we've we've gone about as far as we can with the x100 we're gonna have to make it just a little bit larger for a different kind of battery um for all the other things that you've asked for maybe a twin card slot so we're here's the x200 and start all over what do you think maybe who knows what do you think do you think no do you idea think, do you think that would be a good idea kev do you think do you think that's a goer, that one? Well, I always think whenever any camera manufacturer brings out a new camera, you know, the the, the, the truth of it is that it's always a race, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, Fujifilm bring out uh, the latest bells and whistles camera, then Canon bring out one that's got even more bells and whistles, then Sony, then Nikon. Leica just bring out heavy, really expensive <laughs> cameras that don't have quite as many bells and whistles. And I always think, how are they going to make the next one better? Yeah. But they always do, somehow. Yeah. And the reason why they do that is because they're camera designers and engineers, and we're not. But I, <laughs> that's the, one, the reason why they can figure it out, and we can't. But I did think that idea was Neil Ford actually to give him correct credit and due in that. Uh, I was having a. Uh, it was a discussion we had actually on the way up to London, where he said to me, "I don't know. What do you think about the, uh, this idea?" And he sort of mooted this idea of at some stage the X100 going so far and having everything you can put into it as much as well, as far as you can go before somebody says do you know what it's it's time to change this quite radically um, well all camera lines have an end yeah that's you know, true yeah, yeah they yeah. all do don't they you know they don't they don't go on forever same as cars no. don't see any um four capris anymore oh they're nice though kev in the old yeah. days i used to think who wants a four capri it looks a little bit essex boy Excuse me for those that live in Essex, but it was, let's be honest. 
I loved it. It was it was my when I was a I used to be a, a milk boy and um the milkman Mike Meller, he had uh he had a lot of stories, but he also had a black Ford Capri two point eight liter injection. Ooh, what the yeah. um the the one with the, the net headrests. I can't remember the net headrests, yeah. but I just remember, you know, he used to bring me back from the dairy sometimes and he'd just put his foot down and it would be <laughs> We'd be about 10 seconds ahead of where our asses were. <laughs> yeah, but let's remember, you had just spent the last hour and a half in a milk float. Any, this is true. Anything's going to be quicker. <laughs> this is true. Those were the days. And I used to stand on the back, on the on the axle, at the back of the milk float, holding on for dear life. What? And trundled along. Health and along safety, the, Kev. The 48 Health and safety? <laughs> Ah, oh, it was brilliant. <laughs> used to love it. Used to do all the milk bottle sorting while we were travelling. Fantastic. Did you ever it's, drop any? Oh, Oh, yeah, loads. I used to be able to hold. Hang on, I need to count it now. I used to be able to do one, two, three, four, five in my right hand. Right. And then four in my left hand. Have you got hands as big as, like, plates or something? No, it was a clever, clever way. Four, the one on the, the five, you put uh, your four in the middle, in yeah. between your fingers, and then you yeah. plop one right in the middle of your palm. The problem with that technique, though, is if you then fill up your other hand, yeah. is you can't fill the other hand up with five because you need to put the milk bottles down and release you can't, if you've got five on each hand, you can't put the bottles down and release because you've got ones in the palm. Never knew you were, a, you were a milkman, Kev. Hey? Yeah. I, I, I worked at a petrol station in the days when it was attended service petrol stations at National Garage. Um, <laughs> that is going back. That, <laughs> no. I think we were one of the last. I think I saw a documentary on the History Channel about those. <laughs> yes. It was one of the last in, uh, where were we, in Hartford? And, uh, yeah, we used to have a massive queue when I was on because everybody, all the, the older the older generation um, would turn up because there was the nice lad on Saturday mornings that would fill the car up with petrol, then check the oil, do the tyres, and for good measure then go out back and get one of the big bags of potatoes that they and, and put potatoes in the back of the car. I can tell you that queue used to be all the way down Ware Road. It was it was <laughs> huge. Anyway, so um, I think you can do a question now. I was going to have another quick question, but we've kind of done that one. We, oh, we, all right. we, so, we, hang on, Kev. We've milked that one. <laughs> I'm really surprised you didn't do the cow. I haven't got the cow effect at the moment. Um. <laughs> anyway, go on, your question. Connor Gowes says, this is also from 12 weeks ago, Hun Hill and Gavin, uh, QQ, would either of you want to try using the old medium format film camera, the Pentax 6x7? Ooh. I've recently got one with the 105mm f2.4 lens. Ooh. I love it and just wanted your thoughts on it. Also, Ooh. my Instagram is f350films. Um, so at f350films, all one up. word, Instagram. numbers. Uh, if you would like to see some photos I've taken with it. So we shall do that. By the way, anybody who writes in questions-wise um, or from the Facebook, etc., feel free to promote your um, Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Absolutely no dramas with that whatsoever. Might get you a few extra followers. I am now following well, I've back. Well, I've just followed back. Connor, Connor Gowles, isn't it? Films. Connor Gowles, F, F350 yeah. Films. Oh, look at this. Yeah, oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're really nice. You can tell they're shot on film, but, you know, in a, in a positive way. I love the black and whites of the cats and the, the alleyway and stuff. But you know, I, I'm looking at the one of the, the the sort of the light green house that we're now looking at sort of nostalgic, yeah. Yeah. nostalgic kind of scenes that could have been shot. I don't know. That could have been shot back in the 60s. Well, he's tagged that as X100F. Oh, right. <laughs> so I don't think he shot that on the Pentax. Um, I, well, maybe he treated it like his film stuff. Looks, maybe some of the newer stuff is... Looks is, terrific. Uh, oh, so, right, okay. Right. But, but anyway, regardless, it's a nice uh, nice Instagram feed to follow that. I like that. Um, yeah. Connor goes at F350films. You can follow him. Um, but going back to the question, no, I've never shot... I have seen a Pentax 6x7. Yeah. Uh, it scared the bejeebus out of me. <laughs> so I, I can't imagine me ever getting involved in that kind of stuff. But I certainly do admire... Uh, the results people get. I mean, I've always, I've always wanted to get into, you know, black and white film photography. Yeah. Um, I have no experience with it. Wouldn't even know where to start. And the reason why I've always thought I've got a good opportunity with it is because we've got a, our, as you know, a cottage is about 700 years old. And yeah, yeah. our bathroom is in the middle of the house, uh, no windows. And so it would be perfect. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> 
Uh, however, there's one slight problem with that. Yeah, in I, that. yeah. Gemma, Gemma would kick me out. Gemma, what do you think of the? <laughs> no, not very keen on that idea at all. No, no, uh, no. no. Um, so, it's so not, no, it's never happened to me. But what about you? Well, I can see where he's got his passion from for this because um when i had a studio i had uh what was it it was a mamiya rz67 that was it and it was a beautiful camera and it was a really i i did a i did a college course using that and also a nikon which i've still got have i still got that one nikon 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 f5 which is a brick of an slr beautiful camera and uh, but the RZ67, yeah, the loading process also it just took forever, Kev. It was wonderful, and um, I had a prism on mine as well, so that I didn't look down into it. My mine came with a prism, um, but that was that was a one. So I, I I understand exactly what he's talking about. I think it's a lovely idea, Kev. You don't have to. You could build a, a shed out out back, Kev. I've seen your garden. I yeah, think there's seen room. my building skills. <laughs> Although I did, I did build a table yesterday. Um, yes, no. So I would. Yes, I, I. I've often thought about going on a you know a film photography weekend or something like that. But but I'm I wouldn't. My my hurdle is always the processing because that's the bit that interests me. You know, yeah. doing that myself. I wouldn't want to be the person that has to send off to a lab and then you know get the negatives back and well why not just pro- I just feel like I digitize them and edit them well why not just process the film and then scan that as most people do these days well yeah I've got I can do that I've got the technology here well, to do well, there that. we go so if you want if you want to go film shooting Kev I've got a few film cameras I've got a nice Leica up there as well not not yeah, but it, it it's that that digitizing it and scanning it then it just comes onto your computer doesn't it it's not I like the idea of seeing the wet film uh, the the photo appear Right, you want to be in a dark and, it, and leaving it there, not yeah. editing it. You know, leaving it with all its beautiful. I'd, I'd be so tempted to, once it comes into the computer, to you know, add a t- tweak here, tweak there, blah blah blah. Well, um, people don't care. Love, I don't think there's anything. I know, I know, I know yeah. there's nothing wrong with it. No. But I, I, you know, for me, the cathartic nature of this whole exercise would be shoot do film, it, everything all the way through. Do it, process it, watch yeah, the yeah. Yeah, watch the, the wet prints hang in, and yeah. then finish in there. I get to do that every year in Scotland at this wonderful, in Inverness, at the darkroom. And uh, it is a wonderful day. It's just, we go photographing the day before um, with film cameras and then in the darkroom and produce a print, an art print, hopefully, (laughs) by the end of the day. It is such a wonderful thing. And if you're lucky enough to be anywhere near Inverness, I know this is probably a small part of the audience, but... If you are, the darkroom facilities there, the community, dark, and there are other community darkrooms, are just brilliant. And it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Um, the paper is the thing that costs the money, Kev, more than the chemicals. Is there, yeah, the is there a little fella that runs over and sticks a little white sticker on it that says, overexposed? <laughs> <laughs> so film, not for you then? Well, it could be. But, but time, effort, yeah. knowledge, I don't have it. Oh, Kev, you can learn it quickly. I'm telling you, Kev. Mastering it, totally different, but mm. you can learn the, the basics of it. You can learn. And uh, you've, got a very, you've got a very mechanical mind in many respects. And you? you just lay things out. You know, you, you just, you're very good at segmenting and compartmentalizing. Um, so I know that you'd be able to look at the chart. You'd work out the film. You'd know how long it needed to be in the developer. You'd go all the way through the process with the papers. I can tell I'm not convincing you. <laughs> Stop. One day, one day, when yeah. when time is right, I'll 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 go on a weekend course somewhere. I'm sure. Well, Kev, if you ever want to come and learn, we can go together. I, yeah, I still do I'll it. Do Owen Richards. Um, hi, both. I've just finished doing a three six five on Instagram. I loved it. Well, let's while we're doing Instagram stuff, this one is Alzi seven seven. So at O W S I E seventy seven Alzi seventy seven. 99% of my images are black and white. Now, I want to start to change my look, i.e. colour, not just shadows and silhouettes, and wonder how to transition into this. My question is, should I start a new Instagram account with all my other images and colour, urban, seaside, street, and keep the original account as it is? I've loved and listened to the cast since around episode eight. My word, Owen, you deserve a medal. Kev, one day I'd love to have a beer and chat about Jim Marshall and Johnny Cash after a street workshop both heroes of mine thanks both from owen richards so have you gone to the instagram account yet 
Yeah, I was already following it, actually. Ah, very and, good. And I've just noticed that my wife is also following him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff you find out, Kev, eh? Yeah, Sometimes. followed by Seren underscore Ellis 77. Yeah. Well, why not? Maybe she likes his work. Yeah, I'm sure she does. There we go. Yeah. I pressed follow as well. Oh, yeah, I like nice. the silhouette work. Yeah, I suppose if you started to break this up with something that's very different, it might confuse the audience. What do you think? What was the question again? <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the pictures. <laughs> okay. Um, I've just finished doing the 365. All of my images are black and white. I want to change the look, i.e. colour, and not just shadows and silhouettes, and wonder how to transition. Question is, should I start the new Instagram account with all the other images, like the colour and the urban and the seaside street, and keep the original account as it is? Um, so as, I suppose, uh, not not to confuse the audience. Right, OK, point taken. Yeah, um, well... I mean, I sp- uh, ultimately, it depends on what your ambitions are with this. You know, is it is it simply a place for you to share your pictures or is there any kind of commercial element to it? Are you selling prints? Are you looking for commissions? That kind of thing, in which case probably makes more sense to keep it brand strong. Um, does, it have not, to, it, does it have to be? But not everything has to be. We've had this it conversation this week. It doesn't have to be, but, you you know, if you're if this is a brand and you're stuff. selling it as a brand, then I, I would suggest, You don't have to yes. be selling a brand. It can be a brand of, of it can be an extension of your, your, your artistic output, can't yeah, it? Yeah, but that, that, that's, 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 that was the question I asked. Is this, you know, do you sell prints? Do you, you know, is there a commercial element to this? Do people approach you for commissions? In which case they will all be black and white because that's what he's offering now. Mm-hmm. So that that was my point. If that's if not the case, i.e., this is just a personal project, then I, I don't see any any issues at all in putting the color stuff. But because the Instagram, um, what they call it, the homepage of the Instagram thing, grid, grid, yes, yeah. because that's so beautifully curated, and he's actually put thought into um, like which images go next to each other and stuff like that. I would take that into account. So maybe you do. I don't know, nine black and whites, nine colours, nine black and whites, nine colours, you know, that kind of thing, rather than randomly dropping in a colour one here and there. I think that would ruin the flow of the uh, grid. I don't, like I, I said, don't, if I it's a yeah. commercial endeavour, then I would potentially think twice. You see, there is one, look, if you scroll down far enough, yeah. there's a Christmas tree, a colour Christmas tree. Where is it? Uh, and it stands out like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I don't think, by the way, that uh, the commercial thing here should be the barometer or the reason behind protecting the grid uh, and popping the other colour work on an alternative account because as an amateur or hobbyist, you can also have a, a brand identity, Kev. You don't you don't have to be taking the almighty dollar or pound. You can have brand identity regardless of it being a business. The beauty is, the beauty here is the consistency, isn't it? It's uh, I think the commercial thing isn't the factor here, right? It's it's his personal brand of photographic style that's the consideration, I think. But but my point is, if you know, if he is selling black and white prints, or he has commissions from people that come to him via Instagram, it will be based on his black and white work. And so, I would not advise, you know, kind of breaking that up. But like I said, if it's not, um, because that is the brand, the brand here, a brand is what's in people's minds. Yeah. You and know, it doesn't have to be commercial. Of. That's all I'm saying. A brand doesn't have to be commercial. No, no, no. Of no. course it doesn't have to be commercial. That's the unknown. That was the question I'm asking. Yeah. If it is commercial, then I would say no. But I'm equally saying, element. even if it isn't commercial, I would still say no, because I think this is absolutely beautiful work and, and you're identified for it. Having said that, as you go much, much further down, there's a lot of colour, Kev. So at some stage, around Back about... In, uh, yeah, they, they, these are... Uh, uh, mm, around about... Uh, only 56 weeks ago, actually. Um, yeah. So not that long. Around about 56 weeks ago came the decision from Owen to to go with this very um, stylized black and white silhouette thing. So that when, was, did the, was when did this email come in that you're reading? Um, it came in at the start of March. Okay. So, so looks like he... Used to do that, changed his mind, yeah, and now he's considering it. Again. What do you think about multiple Insta? Um, moving on to a wider question about multiple Instagram accounts. What, what do you think, Kev? What, what's your thoughts on having different accounts doing different things? Well, I've got three. Yeah, two of which I never use. And and the reason for that is because you think, oh, I've got uh, time to invest. I can't in be that bothered. One. Yeah, there, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not bothered. 
Is that another part of the consideration of this, that if you want to show and share your work, if we take away the commercial element, I'm assuming there's no commercial element here, just for the sake of this this conversation, if you take that away, you'd be saying, you know, share more, don't worry so much about the stylized feel to it. Because yeah, you're more so. likely to post more. Yeah, I mean, you'll you'll you know you'll end up with if you start a new one, you'll end up finding it hard to get yeah. traction with it. Of course, you will, same as everybody else, and so that might kind of push away the ambition and the kind of want to spend time on the other profile. Yeah. But maybe not. What's the what's uh, Kevin? Uh, the Kevin. Well, let me look up your Mullins one. Now this is interesting, isn't it? Because I'm a follower of yours, but I haven't seen yours come up in the in uh, in the algorithm for um, for a little while now. I don't like that. I like to. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yours yeah is, so my other ones yeah. are Mullins underscore monochrome, Mullins underscore portraits. But yeah. You're very I mean, I, like if I look at the Mullins underscore monochrome one now, that has got and it's the first time I've looked at it in a very long time. One and one thousand one hundred followers. Okay, but the last last time I posted anything on there was thirty one weeks ago, and mm. prior to that was forty six weeks ago. Thirty six thousand on your on your main channel, and you're very very varied with what you do, and you always were, regardless of of whether. You know, in the times where you were shooting lots and lots of weddings to the times where you're shooting not so many, you were always varied, weren't you? You you yeah. would put up a family picture. You would put up a, a portrait amongst your weddings and the pictures from from uh, from Espana. And, you know, you, you are, you don't mind being varied, do you? No. You think it's a good thing? Well, I'm not necessarily saying it's a good or a bad thing. I mean, I, I am, well, I, you know, to me, I, it, it doesn't bother me, put it that way, but... You know, I it does when I look at my grid compared to Owen's grid. Uh, like visually, his is more attractive because it's all black and white, apart from if you go back far enough. Yeah. Whereas mine's a bit of a cluster of stuff. You know, I mean, my recent posts have got <laughs> street photography pictures on there and all sorts. Yeah. But yes, I mean, now that's always worked. I'm happy with it. Yeah. Um, I've just seen something. You know. <laughs> happy Christmas, everybody. In fact, you didn't even write Happy Christmas. You write Hey Yep. Christmas, everybody, and it's you <laughs> standing there with a with an elf bag that says, "I just like to smile." Smiling's my favourite. <laughs> I put that up every Christmas. <laughs> I've never seen that one, Kev. I look about fifteen <laughs> hey, years younger. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, there's a guy here. One of the comments were from our man in Liverpool. Do you know our man in Liverpool, by the way? Um, I don't. Anyway, he says, for F's sakes, stop being grumpy. <laughs> that is really, oh, I must make sure to uh, to look for that and put, can I put the link to that in the show notes? I think that's brilliant. I love it. I love it, Kev. Right, go on, your question. Uh, okay, on Christmas theme, Oswald Mandel, again, remember this was sent in just after Christmas this year, says, right. <laughs> if you had to pick your favourite photograph from the holiday season, mm. which one would it be and why? Ooh. God, that was a long time ago now, Kev. We're in April. I, you know what? I don't really think I took many pictures of no, Christmas. I don't, we were, I don't we were all over the place. And, you know, my dad went very well. We yeah, were everywhere. Yeah, we were in, yeah. in Shropshire, Wales, here. Um, I'm sure I did take some pictures, but to be totally and 100% honest, they've probably all taken on my phone. Yeah, okay. Can't recall off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, in the past, years gone by, some of my favourite ones are, you know, Albie when he was little, getting just the look on his face when he got a, a box of something, Lego or whatever, something that, you know, within a week would have been discarded and, and thrown away yeah. more than likely. Um, but, you know, just the, the face, the sheer excitement. Um, and I've got a lovely picture of Rosa one year. It was Albie's birthday. And I did this, I did this fast motion f- a photo film it is on my youtube somewhere right. of um of the day albie's birthday day right. and it started in the morning and finished at night and and in that day we we kind of had breakfast we opened presents we went to wales went to barry island they went on the fairground came back over the seven bridge all of that kind of stuff and there's this se- there's a sequence where albie's opening his christmas his birthday presents and uh rose is really happy for him and excited etc yeah. and then he opens like something big again i don't know what it was um, big box and she, you can see her face just drop and her hands her arms go across her chest and the little tear starts rolling down her eyes because she suddenly realized that actually she isn't getting anything <laughs> <laughs> oh, just no. it's his day not her day oh, uh oh, you know yes. i mean she would have been about 
six or something, I guess. Yeah. Don't um, you do happy unbirthday presents in your house? Happy unbirthday. Yeah, we do a happy unbirthday for the boys. So the other, it's not a big present. It's only a little. You, you get your happy unbirthday present. We sort of mm. did that right from the early days. So it, on on your special day, <laughs> you still got a little prezzy, but it was your happy unbirthday prezzy day. Yeah, that's quite a nice idea, especially when you got. <laughs> Yeah. It's so close together in age, yeah. Oh, nice. I felt for Jack last week, though, on his six, 16th. 16, Kev. Oh, mm-hmm. on his 16th. Um, so he had his prezzies and, um, a few days before his birthday, actually, because uh, it just fell at the weekend and we did this part. We got him a, a, pe- a pizza, uh, one of these pizza ovens. He loves food, loves pizza. And we all made pizzas and started from the dough, Kev. Started from the dough stage. I tell you what, I've got a whole new respect for the people at Domino's that are able to throw those things around their head and then lay them out perfectly formed every single time. But, mm. um, and then Tuesday was his ber- actual birthday. And so there were not really any prezzies that day, but his, uh, his brother kept some stuff back, little Thomas. And he'd wrapped up, bless him, uh, an iPhone box. And uh, he gave this, <laughs> gave this iPhone box. He, wait- he waited it inside as well. So it felt like mm. there was an iPhone inside. And, mm-hmm. and he gave him this present, and Jack unwraps it, and he thought, oh, an iPhone! And then, and then we looked at him and said, no, no, don't think so. And Thomas said, oh, got you. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica Barnes has written in. Hello, Kev. Hello, Neil. I've recently switched to, here we go, pick time. E. To your credit. Um, I have some pick time questions. Should have done this right at the start if we'd have thought of this properly do you load your photographs in srgb so we'll start with that one yes yep is the everything answer for me? everything that's going to be displayed digitally should be in srgb when why why not adobe just just to get the question because it will look oh. pants in a web browser right all the color will look terrible washed out yep. look awful so um, srgb is always the way yeah i've uh, she did say actually I, I did think that was for loading uh, on the web to view so you're right veronica yes I've used yeah. RGB or ProPhoto color space when uploading to a different site in the past. If I want my um, clients to download files and, and buy and purchase prints, will the uh, sRGB, as PickTime suggests, affect the prints? Oh, shouldn't do. Not not now. Not modern um, printing technology shouldn't yeah. have an impact. The only time I've ever been requested to send an ARGB file was a very long time ago to a, uh, a print lab who said, you know, we only deal with ARGB and that was for a kind of fine art print yeah. that was, um, you know, very detailed, I suppose. Um, but yeah, not, not, not these days. Um, you know, if time? you're going direct to a specialist lab, yeah. they might ask for ARGB, but uh, it's unlikely. And it's certainly not, not through pick time. I don't think no. you'd have any issues. When was the last time you worked with CMYK? Blimey. Yeah, that's going back a bit, isn't it? Just wondering what your process is for uploading to pick time. Well, I think, uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's sorted there. It's sRGB. As far as file size, do you upload full resolution files and let PicTime compress them? Or are you guys using JPEG Mini or some other compression program prior to uploading? My Fuji files out of the XT5 are huge. I don't want to load huge files under PicTime. I'm very interested in your exporting and unloading process as far as files being loaded into a PicTime gallery. As always, hope all is well with you and your families. Love the podcast from Veronica. So I don't have an XT5, so I'm not talking about huge uh, 40 megapixel files, but I'm not sure I'd change my process anyway. I just I just put put up the uh, the full res because you'll need to have there taken them down the other end to make huge prints with, wouldn't you? Yes, upload the full res images always to PickTime. I, I export them from Lightroom. You yeah. can get a PickTime plugin that will do the transfer from Lightroom directly to PickTime. I, I don't do that for several different reasons, but, you know, they're not really relevant. But they're always full size, exported full size, 100% from Lightroom. Yeah. Um, and I don't tinify them, JPEG minify them or anything like that. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm putting them on my website for my blog, then they're exported at two and a half thousand pixels on the long edge, yeah. and then I put them through um, tiny PNG. But but for the client stuff, no full size, up it goes. Um, don't take that long, and I'm in the I'm in the countryside. You know, we don't have particularly fast broadband. Just leave it running. It might take yeah. twenty minutes or Imagine so. Imagine doing that in dial up days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was pretty good actually. <laughs> 
<laughs> all those hours listening to it. That's why. Yeah. I've just got to go. I'm done. I need, need to upload and download some stuff. I'll be away. I'll be away for five days. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm interested in the two and a half thousand pixel thing. I know I do the very same thing, but with your, with the way you explain things technically, Kev, why do you, because not all your pictures on the website will be displayed at two and a half thousand pixels wide. Why do you load stuff at two and a half thousand pixels wide? Because that's the widest point on my Squarespace website. And on most Squarespace websites, that's the default. You can set it wider, but you shouldn't. You can set it narrower, but I, I wouldn't. So 2,500 pixels and then Squarespace actually creates multiple versions. So if you have like a um, featured image, for example, which I think is about 400 pixels wide, it yeah. will create, it will minify itself, create a... 400 pixel version and you know if you ever if you ever inspect the code behind your website and you look at the images you'll see that you have you know let's say wedding photography one dot jpeg and you'll see that there is wedding photography one um hyphen 2500px.jpg and hyphen 500px.jpg etc etc so squarespace does all the heavy lifting there what what have you changed um your picture sizes you know, if, if suddenly you change the design of your website, say, so, well, I don't want to do 500 anymore, those small ones, I'm going to make them 600. W- would it take the 500 ones and make them 600? Or would yeah. it go for the 2,500 ones and make those 600? Yeah, no, it renders it properly. It does it It does it all for you. So you don't want it taking the 500 to go to 6. You want it to take the, the larger one. It, it takes the largest one, right, renders okay. down. So it, yeah. w- it would intelligently render them down. That's very clever, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another one of the reasons why I'm glad I don't do WordPress anymore. How many years have you been away from WordPress now, Kev? Uh, five, yeah. six. I don't know. I still run I still run the Rugby Club WordPress site, um, which is, you know... I bet you don't look forward to doing that. No. <laughs> well, um, but saying that, WordPress in the last six years may well have come along leaps and bounds. I have no idea. I'm sure it has. Yeah. Well, you're very happy with Squarespace, aren't you? So. Well, that's it for a, for a, a, an, an, another couple of weeks. Um, Kev, you've got lots of duties to do now. Uh, uh, we won't go over the red wine and, and uh, crisps stuff again because uh, <laughs> well, the worst, the one I've got to go to now in about an hour is the Stations of the Cross, which is which is the most painful one for me because it involves genuflecting multiple times <laughs> on one knee and on my left knee, which is my bad knee. Genuflecting. <laughs> yeah, kneeling, kneeling on one knee. I've never heard it called genuflecting before. I wondered okay. for a minute when he said uh, the ne- the next. Uh, the next one today involves me genuflecting. I thought, my God, what sort of stuff are you going to? <laughs> well, uh, uh, anyway, have a good Easter, Kev. Um, yeah, I know by the time you hear this Easter, <laughs> uh, a lot of the Easter bit will be will be done. But if you celebrate that, if that's a festival that you celebrate. Happy Easter to you as well. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye, Kev. Bye. The Fujicast is an independent Loading Zone production. Email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk. Email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way.